I V M. Once again, we are here. Uh, stay at home edition of GBCD number. Now it's not going to be able to get it. But yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. so yeah. I mean, um, but the good thing is that like things are sort of, I know like it's still locked down, but like things are coming back to normal. I mean, I can, uh, like I could order like, uh, a, like stupid stuff like spatulas and stuff you know on, on okay. that's like so much that gave me so much joy when they arrived yeah. and uh, and you know those uh, really like uh, silly cleaning gloves like those silicone yeah. oh my gloves. god dude for like dishes uh, yeah those I need uh, you to send with... me a link I need you to send me a link because I buy these scotch bright every time yeah, and they are the worst. They yeah. literally, first of all, their largest size is ultra tight on my hand, uh, <laughs> and uh, they just tear every fucking four five days, and they're not cheap. Yeah. But here's the thing. I mean, it's not like you won't need uh, a sponge after that. Like, but it it if you're having like I don't know, like if you're a curry person, then you will need something after, like you know, to kind of uh, what it does is it it takes the residue and gunk away like you know in the first I, year and I know you what you're talking to. about this is the one with all the bristles on top yes right? yes, yeah, yes, yes dude I am oh my god kid. yeah I, I it, know it gave me so much joy once it arrived and mine is like you know my uh, my gloves are like lilac so oh, I was oh just god. like oh my god oh my so god. gay so no and in my case it's like uh, I again I have gone into like some OCD overdrive uh, lately not lately all my life I've struggled with the hand I've spoken about this before I have a hand washing germophobic mm, yeah, yeah 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 so what's been happening is now that I clean way more than I did pre-pandemic because we don't have our house help right now. Uh, so suddenly I'm noticing way more dirt and suddenly I'm scrubbing way more surfaces and way more dishes and way more things. So my mm. hand is constantly in contact with way more harsh detergent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dry. My hands are all like like bruised. Like, oh my God. Bruised and mine just are straight up like, they feel like a snake. Like they're scaly <laughs> and like uh, they they get wet for two minutes and I'm like all wrinkled and shit. Uh, so much so my uh, my I, I sent pictures to my dermat yesterday. Like, hey, mm. I need a solution. And every time he says, you need gloves. Okay, but oh, I'm like, what yeah. do I do right now? I can't find anything with Scotch right and those are shit. So mm. I'm gonna ask you to send me a link. Yes, I will. <laughs> Uh, because I have seen those online uh, and you know the stupidest thing I made my first online purchase recently too and it is the stupidest thing it is also what do you mean your first online purchase like ever in the the pandemic in the pandemic like since the lockdown yeah got it it. I've not ordered anything what was it you'll laugh if I tell you okay please bring it on I bought a neck fan do you know what a neck fan is uh, okay. it's, like it's also my first TikTok purchase. I saw an ad on TikTok. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, it's basically a band you wear around your neck, and there are these two propeller type fans that directly aim on your face. So if you're oh. a person who spends a lot of time in the kitchen and you get sweat in your eyes and you start sweating <laughs> a lot, it just hits hawa on your face at all. Oh, times. nice! It's nice. Yeah. It's adorable. Uh, it's, it's pink. So cool. It's bright pink, and uh, it's, it's pretty effective. I thought first, this is—it's the most Chinese invention ever. If you look at it, you're like, this can't be more Chinese. Hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, uh. So here's the thing. The other thing I did was which which made me feel so good, and not that it's been delivered yet, hmm. but. Uh, so I was talking to my shrink the other day and uh, I was just telling her that, you know what, I, I'm not even a smoker, but I've been mm. craving, you know, I like like congratulatory smokes or like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, you know, that yeah. kind of a yeah. feeling like, like a Saturday, like, like after I used to swim. Got it. Uh, like I achievement cigarettes. Achievement cigarettes. Cigarettes. I used to yes. call them achievement cigarettes. Yeah. So I said, I hate the fact that I don't have the option and like, yeah. I'm not. Uh, in fact, so what I was saying is that, um, so here's the thing. I, I spoke to my uh, shrink and I was saying that I've been missing those uh, congratulatory cigarettes and and uh, 
she said you know e like if if that makes you happy and you if you find a way and it's not like i didn't know you could get cigarettes by like pre- paying like 100% premium and all of that yeah. so she said if you if that one pack makes you happy like for once like you know you can like and again she asked me have you been going overboard shopping and all of that i said absolutely fucking not like i have saved okay. so much money like it's not funny yeah. so um so she said then just like you know maybe maybe do that and i did and it felt so good and and again like perspective you know look like little treats for yourself it's so it's so funny so because i ha- i went to my therapist yesterday and we like had face to face that face to face face to face but nice. he had a visor on and like a mask oh my god mask on, and then we couldn't like anything but whatever and uh, we had the exact opposite discussion because mm. in my case uh, again we spoken about addiction before and i am three years clean now and uh, i suddenly felt uh, this crazy need to want to smoke cigarettes to yeah sure but see that's the thing how you said you're an achievement smoker like you yeah. just want achievement i'm a boredom smoker if i get bored and uh, i don't get bored but if it's just like if i have nothing to do i'm going to put it like that if i have nothing mm. to do i want to do something destructive and uh, <laughs> suddenly what has started happening is i'm constantly toying around with thoughts like oh maybe come on uh, and my flatmates both are stoners they both are smokers and suddenly lately i've started getting this chill i just a doobie why don't you hmm. it's just a cigarette obviously you won't go back now you've quit for 3 years and i know me shunetra i take one drag on that cigarette i will smoke hmm. a pack in one hour i know hmm. it now at this point in life if i smoke a cigarette i know i will never quit till i die of it hmm. so mm. uh, he was straight up no and then i i was trying to do like a market shopping haggling type thing with him i was like okay i have a bag of weed what if i make butter and i eat it as face cakes uh, mm. what if, what if i do lsd <laughs> and that's because these are things that i still have with me it's just mm. i don't because of my uh, mental health and uh, that's that i guess that's what the topic one of the reasons i wanted to talk about therapy today is a lot of times in my inbox and you get these messages too i'm sure but like a lot of times boys tell us their problems mm. and the question usually ends with do you think i should go for therapy mm-hmm. and first of all straight up yes <laughs> yes uh, whether, <laughs> even if you're totally fine in life just go for therapy it's it's so nice, yeah yeah you know? Uh, like don't you do physiological checkups like you know it's it's like that it's like a dentist's appointment where you just like clean your teeth it's not like you're you need to go to a dentist only when you're pulling your wisdom tooth out yeah um it's like sometimes it's so a great important. way to just know where you are in life when you talk yeah. to someone else. and it's not and you know what i mean when i say it's not like talking to your best friend it's like it gives a very what i love about going to a therapist is there is such an like i know that there is someone who has my back but i also know that they don't have my back because of who i am uh, like they'll call my bullshit so out that yeah. is so yeah oh my god that is so beautiful it's, so wow so many times i'm like why do i have a crush on my therapist and i think he just <laughs> answered that because i know he doesn't like He doesn't even remember. My shrink doesn't remember half yeah. the problems because in an in an hour I tell him like fifty thousand things that are wrong. Yeah, with yeah. Uh, and I spoke about. Okay, can I can I like uh, t- talk a little about why I suddenly had to go? Mm, sure, uh, sure, absolutely. I uh, I've had two disassociative episodes lately, mm. and they were very scary and. scary matlab i find it extremely funny i'm just going to give you one example i recently was craving indian chinese mm-hmm. okay like crazy and i was like you know what i'm going to do the whole fucking stick i made like a proper chili chicken i made like a proper uh, hakka noodles like a spicy shazwan burnt garlic type mm. noodles you know all of that and there were too many dishes okay mm. uh chinese food is messy yeah mm. uh i ate i was stuffed i was like you know what i'll do the dishes in a bit okay this started in the afternoon i had it for lunch 
Then it became late afternoon and I'm like, I'll do the dishes. I'll do the dishes. Then it became evening. I was like, I'll do the dishes. I'll do Mm. the dishes. And the thing is right now in my house, like I am the one who's constantly cracking the whip on keeping the house clean because I know my flatmates are still in their hostel mentality. Mm. Like someone else will clean it. They don't fucking. So I have to always be on top of my game so that they can't turn around and be like, oh, because you'd not do it, we'd not do it. You know what Mm -hmm, I mean? mm -hmm. So I was like, I kept beating myself up the entire day for I do the dishes now. Do the dishes now. You know, classic procrastination. At six, I finally snapped and I was like, you know what? I got out of bed. I went to the kitchen. I mm. started doing the dishes. Okay. I'm doing the dishes. And then suddenly I'm like, hmm, you know what? These gas knobs have not been cleaned in a while. Mm. So, let me clean. so I started cleaning the gas knobs. Then I started cleaning under the gas stove. Then I suddenly was like, oh, the fridge shelves have not been washed mm. in so long. So I removed those glass shelves. I did that. It took me a good three hours. Okay. To do Mm. all of this, which is fine. I don't have anything to do in life right now. Mm. I got done. I I came back to my room. It was fucking hot. My neck fan ran out of battery. Uh, (laughs) uh, I I got into bed. I was lying down for a bit, feeling super, okay, fine. I did it. And I went over and above and the kitchen is so clean. Great, right? Mm. Uh, I dozed off. Okay, suddenly at 8 8 p.m. I dozed off, okay, and I woke up at some odd 11 p.m. again, okay, and I was thirsty, I get up, I go to the kitchen, Shunetra, I had done nothing. I did not do the dishes, I had not washed the gas stove, I did not clean the fridge. I entirely imagined those three hours Oh, wow. Very realistic way, and this is, I'm just giving you one small, and see, that's the thing, I find this funny. It's a little funny. You know what I mean? Uh, for other people, I'm sure disassociative ep- episodes can be fatal or like terrifying mm. or like harmful or whatever. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to talk about the harmful one. I just thought mm-hmm. this is the kind of, I've started falling into that. Again, I instantly, that's the moment I knew that, hey, I need to go see it. You know, because this is something I've dealt with in the past where I imagine things. It's a, it's a, it's a me. It's a sudden red flag that hey, your bipolar might be surfacing. You need to like uh, this. Mm. So uh, where am I going with this again? Therapy for something as bizarre as this, for something more extreme than this, or for mm. nothing at all? I feel like is a must for everyone. Yeah, yeah. In twenty twenty, there's no way you're not at least I some degree of fuck. Like you know, there was, there was, uh, there was some, there was this um, video I was watching. I don't remember Vox so, or a um, couple of like months back. We like, I think last year sometime where it was talking about how um, stress levels basically in uh, mm. comparative stress levels over, over the years. Mm-hmm. And uh, our stress levels are essentially, um, you know, in uh, almost uh, equivalent to... <clears throat> Like um, asylum inmates, uh, inmates' uh, stress levels back in like you know nineteen tens and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I mean, if if that's the world we're living in, we need a little bit of help too. So yeah, uh, yeah. someone at your door, Shane, yeah, you just get give a me a second. <laughs> Did you get just, a package? No, no, no. One second, just give me a second. <laughs> Uh, check up ke baad. immediately. immediately. Yeah. Thank you. We should keep this in the episode. I like how real it is. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, so the building super sort of came and what they're doing is they're figuring out the best way, the most democratic way, which I really like is uh, uh, of lifting restrictions. So they're kind of uh, doing all uh, all of that. So they were asking Sweet. whether maids should be allowed immediately. So I said, um, like do a basic checkup, like, you know, uh, yeah. like obviously like it shouldn't be a case where we just mm. rampantly let everyone, uh, you know, pass it, it on. Yeah. Yeah. And I just feel like this has been lifted or this whole, oh, we are slowly in phases going to open the but, whole thing up. It's just and it's going to pressure. exponentially increase. Yeah, I just feel it's because the government's feeling some pressure that everybody's at their fucking... Of uh, course, of course. I mean, if, point and like the right way to have done this is invent a, I don't know, I don't know, way of, you know, 
uh, putting people on cryo. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, like, like that would have been the, Yes, like oh uh, like god. putting people on cryo and let this like completely pass off and then yeah. you know wake up like I don't know 2 years 3 years later. Yeah. Are you that seen would have this, You seen this current Johar lately has been putting out a lot of uh, stuff on his Instagram and one of the things he I don't got, follow him. <laughs> one of the things he got is like a head to toe it's like a little, it's not a chamber, but it's like a giant sanitizer <laughs> that all his staff, when they come home and his mom also, there's one video of Hiru Johar, like just uh, being sprayed with mist all over oh as my they God. enter the house. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, these are like... So that's another thing that I have a bit of a problem with, you know, like where, that's the thing now, I, you know, I feel like, on one hand, it's, I can imagine, you know, the domestic helps and stuff. Sure. Um, I can imagine the state of mind because imagine if, if someone like, they're not doing anything, right? Like they're just, yeah, yeah they're yeah. at home and it's not like they have the biggest homes. So imagine yeah. their plight right now. On their top of that, claustrophobia alone. Claustrophobia. I feel like I'm bouncing off my walls, you know, yes. living in a decent house in fucking car, you know. Exactly. And that's the thing. I recently had this because my roommates reached this point. Flatmates have reached this point where they were like, "Hey, should we pay the maid uh, this month?" And I'm oh like, fuck ah, no! Is that you know? is no, 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 like no, no, non-negotiable. I'll tell you where they're coming from. First, it started with "Should we pay the maid?" and I was like, "Obviously, yeah," because whatever and then they're like okay but then let's say for the next six months okay if the girl if this goes out and she can't come then what do we do i was like we'll cross that bridge where it comes exactly right yeah now, right now we should just like there's no way there's no mm. way that we should not be because we have it better today even if something as simple as me being able to order a neck fan online mm. i don't even know what she's going through right now exactly you know? Especially with the cliched alcoholic husband, daughter, yeah, 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 uh, got married, but the husband was abusive, so now yeah. it's back home with her. And yeah, she's supporting her family. I can't, I can't even yeah. imagine what she's going through. Fuck, I so what I was, what I was saying is that on one hand there is that, but on the other hand, if they come back to sort of uh, uh, come back to kind of you know their workplaces, I know for sure there will be so much. Uh, like uh, denigration in mm-hmm. just like uh, in very like through acts you know like yeah. people will in, like make them feel like they are dirty you know like without without really I, I feel wanting, like without actively wanting them to, uh, like uh, you know uh, attempting to for example ne yahan pe bhi aise karke haath dho aur zyada haath dho ya fir like you know okay. like that you know, okay, make them, uh-huh. and you like you think that that doesn't stay. Of course, it does. Of course, it does. So anyway, no, like because in no my right head is it. just like I I understand the value more than ever now. Right now, you know what I mean? Like again, we've had to. Of course, I cook all my meals myself, anyways. But I've never had to do the dishes, mm-hmm. and now I understand the value that this is not easy to do this on a daily basis for the yeah. amount I myself feel guilty for the amount I'm paying. Her. You know what I mean? Yeah, for the first yeah, time, I'm yeah. like, how the fuck does she do this for this amount? You know, and this I is not swear. just the dishes, jaru, ye, wo, you name it, cleaning the fans, the fucking mm. cobwebs, and the uh, it's just. It's made me realize that I'm in such a weird position because on one level, I want to increase her salary when she comes back. Yeah, I yeah, realize, yeah. but I know like on another hand that they, my A, my flatmates won't be okay with it and B, it's like, is that logical? I don't understand right now. No, I mean, part. see, I, I, I've always, you know, what done whatever I could to, uh, you know, pay oh. Yeah. Definitely more than, you know, yeah. a lot of people yeah. do for the amount that, like I live alone for, like I literally pay, uh, what, what full on families, like families of four pay a maid. Yeah. Um, so I try and do whatever I can in those ways. Yeah. But the thing is that, uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I, you ask yourself a question, if you had to do this job, how much would you charge? Would you be happy with this? And mm. it's, it's literally that it's, yeah. for example, I, I feel like, 
I feel like you know uh, the su- you know sanitary sewage workers they should Dude. be paying, get they should get paid so you much know, more. It's so funny to go back to our topic in some way. You know the first thing when I entered my therapist office, I remember the first thing I said is, I don't think I should be here because I yeah I'm doing fuck all mentally. But what I have right now and this ability to come sit and pay you some money so that you can listen to my problems and give me medication is like a different level of privilege right now for me. You know what I mean? Like reading what's going on in the news, what people, the kind of stress like migrants Mm. and again, sewage workers and the kind of everything that they are going through without the option of therapy, it really makes me entirely question if I'm if therapy works at all, you know what I mean? I don't even want to say that, but it works. Sure. But like putting it in comparison to like someone else's issues, I feel like, no, I I shouldn't even be here. But you know, that's another thing my therapist has always told me. Let's say I was, I was horribly thrashed my entire life as by when growing up. I was hmm. beaten up like to a point where I feel like if I had a kid today, I would have totally beaten up that kid. Like, you know, one of those kind of levels of beaten up. Yeah. Mm. And I have a friend who just got one slap his entire life. Like, that's it. His parents once slapped him. Okay. I was thrashed to a point where, holy shit, don't even go there. Abuse, basically. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one thing I learned in therapy that I shouldn't think that because I was thrashed and this person just got one slap, my problem is bigger than this. You know what I mean? How mm. that one slap could have affected that one person and how much I got. It's easy, right? It's easy for me to think, obviously. It's like Max. I feel mm-hmm. like, oh, obviously I was more damaged because I was beaten up way more yeah. than this. But what we don't realize that that's not how the mind works. Someone's yeah, experience absolutely. of any trauma can be of yeah. any degree and yeah. someone's experience of exponentially larger trauma can be of a lesser degree even. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, so, so my, my shrink said something very important. I pick this point up on, you know, like feeling, uh, feeling guilty for being privileged. Uh, Mm -hmm. And again, there was one point that she made that, you know, you can't always feel guilty for who, like what you are at a point of time. You can't, you can't, you Mm -hmm. shouldn't feel guilty. You shouldn't put yourself in a uh, position of feeling guilty for just having privilege. Mm -hmm. You should feel guilty if you don't do something about it. Um, Mm -hmm. If you are, like if you are privileged that's then you're not valid. voice uh sorry no that's very valid what you just yeah yeah uh, so like if you're if you're in a pri- pri- position of privilege and you're not speaking out against something that should be spoken out about or mm. you're not helping like in terms of you know monetary whatever monetary material yeah. ways yeah. so yeah. in little ways if you can do that then yeah. then there should be no guilt it's just it's yeah. then you're doing what you can right yeah. And that just put things in perspective for me because, yeah. you know, I've been, I've been, I've been in space, I've been in places in my life where I've, I've definitely not felt privileged. I've, yeah. I've felt like I'm the opposite of privilege. And, yeah. um, a lot of people have helped me at that point of time. And, yeah. um, and, and it's, and that has helped me in those moments beautifully like come coming sail to sail through those uh, you know situations and yeah. and if i can in my own little ways yeah. sort of do that then sure you know Why and that's not? another thing i want to address a lot of times if either the question in our inboxes ends with should i go for therapy and always followed by is therapy expensive and mm. it is it is yeah, i don't yeah. know there are there are obviously lesser charging uh, therapists of course, and yeah, there yeah. are therapists who charge such a bomb that by the end of it you feel like oh my god maybe my problems are not that big you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but uh, i'm saying what i'm trying to say is 
access to therapy or access to support or access mm. it has never been more widespread than it is nowadays yeah, uh, yeah. in fact so much so right now only i want to leave a marker that if you are listening to this episode and if you like a uh, like a proper excel sheet of all the therapists in your area in all of india actually have an excel sheet of some of them who don't even charge for online therapy. yeah yeah uh, so these are all options don't think it a lot of times i feel like people have this vision of oh you have to go to a clinic and then you sit on a couch and uh, or lie down on a couch and then a therapist sits on a chair behind you with a notepad and he <laughs> scribbles like that is not a real not how it online, goes yeah. yeah online therapy is actually a thing there are tons of apps there are tons of websites there are tons of like support groups community yeah, groups yeah. subreddits there are so many things where you can just literally but i think what happens is a lot of times people don't realize it is learning how to talk about your problems is where they get stuck mm. it is not about their access to therapy or is it this just they feel that my problem is either too trivial or it's too crazy or i'm too stupid or i'm too this to do to take that step and i feel like if you are someone who feels that mm. don't even think about it just talk about it even if it's something as trivial can i can i tell you something and i can't believe i'm about to say this uh i don't know what this makes me as a person okay but i'll give you a small example i said so many I I spoke about how I was suicidal the other day. again when I went for that I was feeling extremely suicidal recently I was feeling extremely down my dissociative episodes have started I spoke all of those things with great ease okay but mm. the toughest thing for me to talk about in therapy was this mm. moment so basically when the lockdown started mm. okay should I I shouldn't say this because I don't want them to find out but you know what I'm an open book. Uh uh <laughs> my uh flatmate got his girlfriend uh to stay with us right before the lockdown was announced because he knew she mm. stayed alone in town and whatever and let's say she was quite a see you next Tuesday. Yeah, uh I was totally fine because we all got our own rooms and stuff so it wasn't like I had to interact with her a lot but there were a lot of moments where she was not cleaning up after herself you know you're in someone's house so I can clean up mm. you know after you. those kind of things she was really getting and it started getting to a point where I was biting my lip to not either unleash on my flatmate or his girlfriend mm. yeah on then she was leaving last week okay and a day before that okay when she was leaving uh i i knew she was leaving the next day basically and i was seeing a shot and i saw her very expensive face wash on the counter okay mm. and i just picked it up to see and it was a bottle for like 4000 bucks or something mm. okay and i don't know what got into me now this is the kind of stuff that i'm having such a tough time even talking about it right i'm extremely uncomfortable now. i don't know what got into me i just felt like i should open that bottle and squeeze all the face wash out just as out of spite that mm. hey you know what you were a fuck all guest this is your this mm-hmm. i hate and now here's the deal first of all it was and extremely uncomfortable because on one i won't say 50% my brain was saying no no for don't do something so stupid and 50% my brain was saying i will say 100% my brain was saying do it and mm. 100% my brain was saying what the fuck why would you do something like that mm-hmm. and i did it i did it you know what i mean and this was the toughest for me to talk about in therapy I but that's talk- again i i feel like uh, so i faced the same thing wherever we felt uh like we were active uh, uh in uh, you know uh, we were an active part and this is again i can't speak for anyone else but for me yeah. whenever i feel and i know for sure that i am uh i have actively watching done yourself do something yeah something that that i consider you know uh, something that may be considered out of character con- out of character and you know crosses that line of right and wrong like yeah. goes to the thing of wrong to yeah. that area of wrong yeah. that i've always found difficult like yeah. i'll i'll give you an example my um before lockdown uh-huh. there was this uh, really odd interaction i'd had on tinder okay. um and uh, the reason i was not opening up about it uh, uh, with my ye yeah, with my shrink was because i was i was confused whether i did something wrong or not so i'll tell you mm-hmm. how it how things transpired mm-hmm. so um 
there was some, you know, there was this person I, you know, I was chatting with and this was like way back in December, I think December, Jan. Um, and, uh, and then we said, you know, when I, like, let's meet up and this person said, oh, so like, I didn't know uh, you would be up to, up for that. So I said, of course, why not? Like, duh. Um, and then suddenly his tone was so like it changed into an attack. Like, uh, you should not presume what other people think. Sir, sorry, what brought it on? What what brought it on? What so I said, I said, I said, duh. Like, of oh. course. Oh. Like, of course, I would, I would want to meet uh-huh. you. Yeah. Uh, and then this person went all attack on me. Okay. I, I was like, Ye se hai, boss. And then, uh-huh. then, uh, then he said, so he said certain things and I said, you know, can you just like for a moment tell uh, me what what triggered you? Because this is like not seeming like you know. Yeah. I don't think this is rooted in like what I did, yeah. and and this person went on to say you know uh, you you're so presumptuous about you know what other people think and as if you're you're throwing crumbs at me and and I was like what oh. what is this even about? And then I. I slowly, gradually, I started telling him that, boss, just read the comments. I said, duh, of course, I would love to meet you because it's a given. No, that's not it. That's not it. The, the, you just don't get it. So then I said, I'm really sorry. Uh, yeah. You're feeling this way. And when I hear myself back, so obviously, I, I know that I did nothing wrong in you know the yeah. lead up to that comment. Yeah. Yeah. But when I said, I'm very sorry you feel that way. Yeah. I know that was not okay. Like I felt it should have been, I'm sorry, I did something to, you know what I mean? Like, it's like saying, I'm sorry, you're yeah. jealous of me. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so it was a really minor thing. But yeah. but I, when I was, when I was kind of going through this incident, I yeah. felt myself pushing this, I'm sorry, you feel this way. Yeah. I kept pushing this to the end of the conversation. And yeah. And it's only natural. Like I, and when I did, my shrink said that, you know, maybe that's, see, understand that maybe this person has a lot of baggage and um, it kind of affected me because I, I always have very, very polite conversations on, on online. And, and even if someone's being like, you know, nasty and like, you know, (laughs) just throwing dick pics without, without Mm -hmm. asking. And uh, like, I'm very, like, I'm not, Oh, fuck off. I'm not, I don't believe in that. I believe in a mm. conversation. If mm. I'm not interested in someone, I, it's very important for me to say that, Hey, it's just my, it's just like, you know, I, I'm not looking for uh, something mm. right now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's never about, you know, making someone feel less than, uh, because yeah. I know what, what that can feel like. So, yeah. so obviously le, my shrink said, blah, blah, blah. But my shrink also said this, that, a true apology is an apology on you, not, yeah, not, Absolutely. you can't apologize for someone else. Like yeah. you, so that again had triggered him off and, and we ended up like, you know, whatever, like unswiping and whatnot. Uh, unmatching. Yeah. Unmatching and whatnot. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, so I think that again got brought, brought some perspective because, because I felt guilty. Anything that you're guilty about, you yeah end up no matter you share you share your current circumstance like this is what I am and this is what I'm going through and that's very easy yeah. but the anything that has a tinge of guilt that anything yeah. that has that tinge of yeah. oh shit I shouldn't have done that yeah. uh, that it's a little difficult to say yeah dude and the next three days after this little phase or incident all I wanted to do was tell oh my god I'm so sorry I did that mm. of course I did not because it makes me feel crazy that why would a 35 year old man who suddenly showering take someone else's bathing product and mm. just squeeze it down the sink? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I get yeah. the intention was to be a dick and like, you know what, fuck you because of the mm. number of dishes I've had to wash because of you or whatever. I get mm. it. But, you know, and that's the thing about 
<laughs> you know, I remember once reading somewhere, uh, someone had just tweeted, my anxieties have anxieties, have anxieties, have anxieties. It's <laughs> yeah. the modern rose. Oh my God, rose yeah. The rose. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, that's day, so true. What happened is once I got out of therapy, it's been three days now, mm. and it's like that was the highlight that I, I finally had the courage to speak about that. Because see, mm. it's such... A lot of times I feel therapy is about what you want to talk about when you're alone. I feel no matter how close your friends are, no matter mm. how fa- family, how close you are with your family, how healthy or productive or whatever, everything mm. you are, I feel like your true, 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 true self is when you're alone. You know, I agree. like I the agree. kind of thoughts, there are things that you might think, oh, I'm an open book and I tell my family and friends everything. Mm. But there is, if you really sometimes sit and analyze, I feel like Mm. the very core of who you are as an individual really comes to the fore when you're alone. You know what I mean? Alone with your thoughts, alone with how you feel, alone with the kind of things you think, the words you say, whatever. Mm. And what happens is, this was such a stupid thing. It was silly on one level, but I was like, why is that the highlight? And then when what I mean by anxieties and anxieties and anxieties, it's like ever since those three days, I've been wondering, holy shit, I've been suicidal. I've been mm. these really grave, dark things. Yeah. But that was what was that was the highlight of the therapy. No, you know what I mean? Of course, so suddenly I it makes me feel understand like that. It suddenly like, makes me question, hey, wait, how okay are you with killing yourself? Right yeah. now? You know what I mean? If it's so casual, if that is not the highlight, you know mm. what I mean? Have you reached a point in your life? And again, I don't mean to be an alarmist. I go to therapy just so that I can I can be healthy and I can not be a danger to myself and all of that. I take those necessary actions, but I have no qualms like saying that, hey, sometimes I'm not doing okay in life. You mm. know what I mean? And so especially since I've thrown the word suicide a couple of times, I have to say that a lot of times it's a uh, holy shit. It's only like uh, give me a little anxiety to talk about it. Uh, but mm-hmm. what I'm saying is, you know, initially I, I, I this, now the older I get, I can see my relationship or the trajectory of suicide thoughts. So I remember in the start, it was very like, hey, I don't want to kill myself, but why am I constantly romanticizing my death? So, which is something mm. we all do. We all do. You're standing at the edge of a building. You wonder what it's like to jump off. Mm. Uh, oh, what if I fell off the bike right now and came under that truck? Like basic, I was constantly, it started like that. So me at least, like, you know, where I was constantly imagining scenarios in which, oh shit, what if I died like this? What if I died mm. like that? It started with that. Then somewhere midway, it became like a, oh shit, am I serious about this? Okay. And now can I tell you where I am? It's it's such a weird place to be, but now it's like a, I what if I do it and then I fail? So mm. you know, again, I, I whoever's listening, or I'm sorry if I'm dropping too much stuff, but I'm just trying to put it out there that hey, talk about this stuff. I yeah. feel like it really helps in that sense. So right now I'm at a point where I feel like I start imagining, let's say I'm chopping onions, suddenly I'll start thinking about, okay, I could slit my wrist right now. But mm. then what if I don't bleed out to death and then suddenly I get a uh, fucking uh, epileptic, uh, not epileptic, but I get some sort of a seizure because I just re- lost a lot of blood, but I don't die. I re- make it to the hospital and then I'm a vegetable for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. What if I hang myself, but I don't hang myself properly? You know, again, mm-hmm. I know what I'm saying is very dark, but I feel like it's time we brought these kind of thing, this kind of thinking to light because I know I know if not everybody, I know people think of things like this. And if even one person out there feels like, holy shit, I think like this too. I just want them to know that it is important to talk about it because when you talk about it, after a while you start realizing that, hey, you know what? I got. It's not that it's going to go away or it's anything. You at least know that you have control over the situation. Mm. Uh, because right now that's where I am and you know it really scares the shit out of me it is scary just knowing that oh shit now I've reached the point where I feel like I will go through with it but I'm only worried that what if it backfires that's my Mm. only worry and I don't want to be like I my perspective has always been about um I always want to be a better version of myself and I know that there are so many like uh, fundamental character flaws and actually not character flaws like behavioral 
ticks that I have that mm. that I don't feel good about. You know, like yeah. one of the things that really, really uh, I feel super guilty about is uh, how I react to. Uh, I've I've spoken about you know my relationship with my father and yeah. I, like my father and my brother are like very emotionally they're great people but they're very emotionally unavailable and very um like they don't like they they're not like well adjusted to emotions like any other like like all of in like in the, the quintessential indian straight man so yeah. um so whenever i whenever they push my buttons yeah. i end up reacting so extremely yeah. like it throws me in a tizzy and i feel so fucking guilty about it because mm-hmm. i then go like i so first it hurts me so bad that i feel like i'm oh. cornered and then i come out with all my like knives like gnashing with my teeth so i and i feel super guilty about it i feel like if can't i handle it better can't i handle can't i be more in control of this emotion this emotion that has send me you know in a complete tizzy so yeah. for me some sometimes even that that is so important because yeah. we we want to be better versions of ourselves yeah. right yeah. and that can only happen when when you when you look at yourself uh, objectively yeah. and you yourself will never be able to look at yourself objectively and yeah, someone of else course, of course. and someone else will be able to do that i yeah. think that's and that's where the shrink comes in that's where yeah. and it's so important especially for the community because we 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 hold hold there is so much like our shoulders have abs like six packs because <laughs> how much because of how much we how much burden yeah. how much baggage we carry like we carry yeah. the baggage of of familial expectations yeah. we carry the baggage of uh, what so what do we imagine a guy coming on my shoulders because i want to <laughs> okay, come then. on my stomach <laughs> <laughs> so you know whether it's you know the burden of family expectations whether it's a burden of uh, expectation from the community how to be yeah. a gay man how to look like a yeah. gay man uh, how to look like a good gay man like you know yeah. it's just like endless and with that burden yeah just it's so important to talk like yeah. it's so important to communicate because believe me i think our g- entire generation has failed yeah. in one fundamental way our yeah. uh, inability to communicate and that's yeah. where it has set so many yeah. people uh, you know back it has set so many families back that mm. it's not funny and you know can i just uh, see again okay, we've spoken about being a better version of yourself so many times okay and i don't know if i'm trying to be too meta by saying this but like a lot of things if you see it's aspirational like you got to be better it's the the climb is upward you know what i mean but i feel actually it's that you know that rock bottom everyone talks about mm. i feel like we need to change the way we look at rock <laughs> bottom rock mm. bottom means once you hit it you start going a uh, little deeper no you start <laughs> going no no you start going deeper because what happens a lot of times when you start scrutinizing or analyzing your problems or working with a therapist you start it's like unveiling multiple masks oh this is happening because of this this is happening see your symptoms will be okay let's say right now you're an extremely feisty angry person yeah mm. sure now the reason the source of that anger could go obviously way back to your parents way back to your upbringing whatever but every time your reaction your why you do a certain thing the way you do it something that makes you unhappy there's multiple angles to approach that with you mm. know what i mean so a lot of times i feel like I I don't like the negative connotation that rock bottom has had in life in general because I always said if I hit rock bottom that means I just need to either look in this direction now it's like that cliche man you know they always I I feel like problems they're like oh god this is so cliche I can't believe you know sometimes you try to look at a star directly but you can't see it but you look at the star beside it and then you can see that star mm. you know what i mean i feel a lot of times problems are like that you don't have to directly look at your problem mm. you look a little on the side look a little on the side and you it will suddenly your problem will come to the fore and then you can probably deal with it better take care of it better accept it better move on better from that problem whatever it is i But mean I it's like, just about the right perspective right like it's literally that it's sure. 
Like I was no, saying, I, because I've multiple times fallen in the trap of directly trying to attack, like cigarette smoking. Yeah, for years I, I just saw cigarette smoking is something I have to quit, and it's just straight vision. I have to quit this. I have to quit this. And I, the more I just kept looking at it as a, I have to quit. I have to quit. The more the problem kept getting bigger. You know what I mean? But the moment I looked to the side a little, and I was like, you know what? I need to stop. I need to make peace with this. I need to like, you know, stop fighting it. I need to surrender. I need to make sure, uh, start looking at this problem differently. You know, the moment that kind of work you put in, which I feel therapy does a lot. I feel like mm-hmm. it just helps you directly move your focus because everybody knows the problem. We all know t- today, like I've been so snappy lately with my flat teammates. They even say hi to me. I, I want to bite their head off. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But mm-hmm, that's yeah. also because I know that in the past two months, they're the only people I've interacted with, you know, in a mm-hmm. lot of ways. So it's like I'm I'm going up the walls and all. But now I know better. If I snap, if I this, I'll feel shitty about it later. I'll be like, what sort of a person are you? Is this your real self? I can do all of that. Or in that moment, just accept my stim- like my response to whatever mm. annoying situation that I have in life basically mm. uh, but yeah yeah uh, and uh, yeah man therapy is a must I feel it's a so much it should be a part of the curriculum <laughs> oh my god that's no so like how to how to tackle your emotions should be part of your curriculum and therapy yeah. should be one of the ways because yeah. that fuck that and uh, uh, that's one of the things that especially boys, you know, are yeah. just not taught. We're yeah. just, and that's so, that's why we're, we're a generation of, uh, <laughs> ill, like, you know, emotionally ill-equipped men. Stunted. Yeah. Emotionally yeah. stunted, emotionally ill-equipped. It's yeah. just awful. Yeah. And, and once again, therapy is not about talking to your, just your friend because, you know, your friend is your support and that's great. And you you, you should have friends around you and yeah. that's good. But yeah. you need that objectivity. You need that yeah. sense of uh, yeah. calling a bullshit out, calling a spade a spade, saying, yeah. uh, you know, this can be dangerous for you. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, like... And, and, and that so- happens, you know, a lot of times when it comes to suicidal thoughts, I have a tough time telling my friends about this yeah. because I understand their worries suddenly. See, right now I spoke so mm. much about it. I feel like I spoke to a wide. Whoever wants to make whatever of it, I have lighten my burden you mm. know what I mean just by talking mm. about it mm-hmm. but when I talk to let's say my best friend who for years knows that I've been in the dumps I've had these kind of thoughts a lot of times so much so that God you know a lot of times you always whenever you read in the paper oh my god how did Robin Williams kill himself he's such a funny guy mm. oh my god how did Chris Farley kill himself he's such a funny guy oh my god is Jim Carrey going to kill himself you know what I mean mm-hmm. uh, like I sometimes feel like Am I going to be the cookie cutter case, you know, where it will be like, oh, but Farad was so funny and all. And a lot of times my friends do that, you know, where, but Farad, you're so funny. How could you, how can you think like this? So no matter how amazing or best or brilliant your friends are, sometimes it's just better when you have, you don't have the, how do I say this? You're not tethered. You're not tethered to anything. Get, when you don't have really the, your problem. You're not so you bound. Yeah, yeah, I know. So it's it's uh, the guilt of uh, uh, upsetting, uh, upsetting someone. someone. Yeah, yeah, because then they develop a look, huh? and then they start yeah, calling yeah. me every day to check if I'm okay. And I'm like, you know what? We've done this for years. No, but that's, that's one of the true. fundamental reasons. Fundamental reasons why 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 Indian children we we don't share enough with our parents because the first at the first drop. Of, you know, showing, uh, you know, talking about a a matter of concern. Have you seen Mm. how Indian parents react? (laughs) It's like the world has come to an end. Like they react like that when you say, I've got a pimple on my cheek. So imagine what will happen if you say, I'm feeling suicidal. Yeah. Yeah. So then to Gaya. So what, that's exactly the reason why children don't share enough with their parents. Dude, trust me, my mom... Uh, everybody knows I've spoken about this. I have an extremely strained, I used to have an extremely strained relationship with my mom. My mom has said things, you know, sticks and stones cases, but like my mom has said things that are irreparable to me. Like psyche wise, she has damaged me with the most acidic things a person can tell their child. Fine. Okay. But one of the sentences 
that really is singed and tattooed in my head was the day she asked me, why do you need to go for therapy? When she asked me that, I was like, holy shit, how the, the nerve, you know, the nerve that you are asking me why am I in therapy yeah. when you are one of the biggest reasons I'm in therapy. You know what I mean? So a lot of times I just see like that sentence just, it was straight up a kick in the nuts and my testicles have never descended back into my scrotum from that. Yeah. Shit. Like so many times, it's just, it's something I don't talk to her about. If I, till date, like she knows I go to, th- because I have been for 12 years now. And that's the thing. A lot of times, some, some people even joke like, oh, 12 years, that means obviously it's not working. And I'm like, no, that's not how therapy works. Therapy yeah. is something you just assume it's a lifelong thing. Sometimes I literally, some of my appointments are just to like go and get an idea of where I am in life right now. Because I don't know. Right now, we are in this situation. Right now is one of those situations. We all are going through it. I don't know what is life right now. I don't know what life is going to be post all of this. I don't know what my days are right now, what time it is. Everything's, I'm sleeping at 5.30. I'm waking up at like 8 in the morning. I'm not being as productive as, as I should be. I'm not, I'm being overproductive, but nothing's working out like job wise. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, if, and you know, a, a little earlier when you're we talking in the podcast, a lot of times what happens is, you know, in school, they teach you how a waterfall, if it keeps falling on the same rock, the shape of that rock, like, you know, I feel like mm, stresses yeah. act like that, like stressors or stresses yeah, yeah. in life. Yeah. They really sometimes pave the way your brain is for, yeah. a, it's, it's your brain's way of like, of just it, it conforms to the stress and you then, Therapy is getting your brain back to like before that stress was there, mm. basically, you know. Yeah, but yeah. the number of, I have so many invisible stresses, like everybody else, I have to say, like everybody else, it, it don't matter from where it's coming from, but everything is stressful right now. Every mm. fucking thing is stressful right now. So sometimes it's just good to like go and make sense of that stress. Yeah. And it's not like therapy, and that's the thing I said before also, it's not like therapy is the answer. But it is an outlet. It is yeah. definitely an outlet. It is not the answer. Uh, because in the end, it's all the work you put in. It's you and your perspective yeah. and you changing. And you fundamentally, and especially with gay boys, I don't want to just say gay boys, but like, you know, I want to say LGBTQ. Sure, there are a lot of stress factors that come with just being under the gay spectrum. But with gay boys where we have problems like compounded shame and guilt and uh, toxic parents and this mm. and that, you know what I mean? We, for us to unravel these things sometimes without therapy, it's like, oh my God, how are you even going to do it? How are you going to, yeah. because so many times we talk about all this, oh, bed <clears throat> banking and all, it literally all fucking stems out of, Self-destruction, you know, and self-destruction is such a, and it can happen, self-destruction can happen in so many ways. You will be amazed. A lot of times, at least for me, I find my biggest problems in life, if I fucking boil them down and crystallize them, the it crystallizes to self-destruction. Everything boils down to me wanting to hurt myself in the end. Whether it's straight up suicide, which is a direct self-destruction trait, or like, Smoking, which is indirectly I want to self-destruct or like me not being productive. So I self-destruct myself emotionally. It literally everything. But that perspective to arrive at that, hey, I am doing this so that I deter my own potential and my own well-being. That requires therapy a little. I feel. I Mm. feel. Ah, God, I talk so much. (laughs) 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 But now, now I feel like I'm a little sorted. I've got my medicines. Uh-huh. Uh, that's another thing. Do you, that's, do you feel a lot of times people are averse because, oh, I don't want to take medicines. Absolutely. And all that, I think that's one of the biggest stigmas thing. because, yeah. I mean, I've, so I'll give you an example of uh, someone at work, okay? Uh, really sweet girl, but she started facing these as, you know, these anxiety attacks. And, mm. um, and I spoke to her, I said, you know, it's important that you go see a shrink. It's, uh, and just to say that this is not a very, uh, this, it, this isn't something that's uncommon. So anxiety, like I face it, I, I've been diagnosed with, you know, acute anxiety disorder and yeah. uh, all of that. And, 
and it's important to take your meds remember that it will start off strong but then it will yeah. gradually wean off but go yeah. through it yeah one week she took the medicines and then she stopped because her response was uh you know i don't want to be dependent on them uh, and i was like this is like asthma bro like what you don't want to be dependent on your uh, inhaler uh, like what are you going to do like yeah. what struggle with your breath that's exactly yeah. <laughs> ex- and and believe me that's exactly like now she's on a on a, like she's on a uh, like like a sabbatical now because now she can't come back to work because she refuses to take medicine and mm. now she's not okay to work so it's yeah. it, people just have to get over their um, that that stigma of having medicines i mean mm. you have medicines for everything else why are you like yeah. not doing this yeah no i get it that's again I, my perspective No, I get the aversion because you know I have noticed that when I'm at my worst, I actually actively don't take my medicines because I'm not thinking clearly. When I'm at my worst, I'm not thinking clearly, and I feel I've got shit under control. I'm more often no, than not. No, it's not so much that. No, no, no. The thing is, I feel cocky about being wrong when I'm when I'm not doing okay in life. You get it. If I'm making sense, I feel cocky, no. and I think I've got shit under control about the wrong things. So it's actually what happens is suddenly when a medicine comes and I know it's going to help me, I feel like I don't need it because right now I'm right in life. When I'm secretly actually not okay, you know what I mean? I, no, I, so that's the point. Is not that you are speaking from a from the perspective of someone who's gone through this journey. I'm of talking course. from the perspective of someone who's not even started this journey. Yeah, for yeah. them, it's important to look at this the, the way you would look at a physiological, you know, disorder. Problem. Like yeah. you would, you would, you you know, you would seek, um, you know, pro- continual help till it gets better, and you would yeah. seek medicinal help. till it gets yeah. better yeah. but why why is it so different here the point is yeah. you think that you will turn into this uh, addict the, the who can't function without medicines yeah. i think that again that comes from the lack of knowledge and lack of uh, um you know exposure and yeah. uh, 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 about what mental health and what 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 this journey is yeah. i think Yeah. fundamentally people don't know what this journey is like you know people have seen it in in uh, like movies and shit where you know there's a sofa and stuff i to have never yeah. been to a shrink who has a sofa and like yeah. i lie down and shit yeah. i literally sit in front of them at a table between us and we talk <laughs> like yeah. it's as simple as that no I'm, so I'm, it's I'm like a doctor's quite, chamber i'm i'm quite pro meds by the way that is because You know, I feel also a lot of people don't know the kind of progress that has happened in psychotherapy. Okay, yes. Sometimes you know, I go and I talk about a certain problem, which mm. is entirely in my head, right? And there's a medicine for it. Like leave alone your obvious. Oh, I have insomnia, and I have. Oh, sure, there's a pill that will make you sleepy. Yeah, but sometimes you know, a very specific niche thing in my head which I'm struggling with. Let's say motivation. So mm. I'm I'm talking about there are medicines for abstract feelings now basically mm-hmm. it's not like a physical symptom oh my knee is hurting so I need to take this for my lower back pain it's not like that you know when you have mm. physiological pain sure okay your your eyes are itchy sure put these drops and your eyes won't be itchy right mm-hmm. but what do you do when you're lacking motivation in life what do you do when you're obsessively compulsively eating way more than you should what do you do when you are like you know what I mean things that are abstract and emotions and feelings they're not things that uh, manifest physically there are pills for that now you mm-hmm. know what i mean i, I you know, uh, so uh, people you know people what they end up feeling is the closest uh, uh, you know connection they make is to sleeping pills so they feel like yeah. anything that has to do with mental health is like a sleeping yeah. pill yeah. where you know slowly gradually your body gets accustomed to the sleeping, sleeping pill and pill, you have, and to, you have more. to take more yeah and and, and i, I, I Come on, yeah, read, read, read a little. Yeah, yeah. That sometimes even I get a little impatient with people, and I'm just like, yeah, read up. I can't, I can't be the one to tell you about this. Yeah, read yeah. up about it. It's fine, but it's just, I, I feel like I get, I get if someone has some sort of like a hiccup or a hurdle in like accepting that hey, my problem is so bad in my head that I need a pill for it. 
I feel like that acceptance is huge. And mm. whoever makes it, I I totally understand that it's not an easy decision to make. But once yeah. you're down the road, you just realize that because, dude, look, we are on a daily basis putting in as much work as we can into ourselves. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We are. We all we all know what our problems really are. We all know why we are angry. We all know why we are not doing okay. We all know these things, you know. Sometimes it's just what does a therapist do? They are just there to like affirm every you sit, you talk, and you realize that holy shit, I already knew everything the therapist was gonna tell me. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, say that. that. No, 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 no. I think it's dangerous to say that. that. Okay. Because there are people who are listening to this and then they'll kind of figure, feel differently about it. I feel like what you get out of a therapist is, and what is most important, you know, perspective. And no, no, no. sure, it is about unearthing the perspective, but to, I, I feel like it's misleading if you say, uh, you already knew the answers. Something and, I need to I'm saying a lot of times we know the... The, the root of our problem we do know and I'm not saying all the time now obviously not today if I I disassociated and for three hours I did something I had no idea about that's batshit crazy to me you know what I mean I'm not saying oh I knew why I had that disassociative episode but a lot of times let's say I have struggled with weight for like years and years and years and I have beaten myself up for years and years and years about it and because of that beating up I've eaten extra cake and I've eaten extra KFC and I've eaten you know what I mean a lot of times sure but like what I'm saying like it's not about sure we might we might have an idea I mean we know something's wrong that's why we're reaching out to someone but I think it's like I said, it's more about the perspective, the objective perspective that you that you genuinely cannot get if you if you think things out or by yourself. Like I think, um, if you can do that, great. But more like for lesser mortals, uh, you know, for which is like most of us. What I'm trying to say is a lot of times it's this affirmation coming externally to you is what you need, even though you might have the answer is what I'm saying. Just hear me out on this. A lot of times, again, whether it was, see, I'll, I'll give you an example. I was a stoner. Yeah. I was a chronic stoner to a point where I, I was anxiety riddled. I was depressed. I was fucking numb all the time just because every time I smoked up, I felt numb. I felt apathetic and that became my way of life. Now, I'm not kidding. I I just said I've been to therapy for 12 years. Trust me, five years of my life was me trying to quit pot and hash and all other drugs and everything that just fucking damaged my brain in multiple ways. Now the thing is, for five years, my therapist would just keep telling me the same thing, which I already know, which is until you give this stuff up, you won't get better. Right? It's a basic thing even I know. And every time he would say something like that, I would like challenge him. No, weed should be legalized. Actually, I feel so at ease. I sleep better because of it. I feel hungry because of it. Oh my God, weed is the best. How can you ask me to give that up? I can give everything else up. I can't give up weed. He would just throw that one sentence at me again and again. Farad, until you give this up, I cannot help you entirely. Until you give this up. You know what happens after a while? It really, the coin drops and you realize, hey, until I give this up, maybe I'm not giving myself an entire chance at becoming a better individual. So I know what you took from it and I'm not trying to say, oh, everybody knows what their problem is and they still have to go to a therapist to just hear someone else tell them uh, that problem in a different Mm -hmm. voice. But that's not what I mean. Sometimes I feel like you constantly need someone who challenges your already set notions about your particular problems in a certain way just to bounce off that problem and be a better person. If yeah, that, that I agree. That I agree. But like to say, but to believe that you have the answer and just someone no, needs to I, just I, say, no, yeah, yeah, you that is the answer. Yeah. Uh, I don't know because I've not had the answer, honestly. I've never had the answer when I enter a shrink's office and when I start my conversation it's always literally been about me saying so this is where I'm at and and even that is a struggle and what I get out of my shrink is she kind of pieces things together then shines a light on an entirely whole reality which which I didn't know which I didn't know of and which I wasn't being able to see so she helps me see it 
with clarity and that that is what i get out of uh, out of my string so yeah yeah okay uh, yeah i think uh, yes, we have to record another episode so we have maybe we should do another episode if if people still feel we are taking therapy after how much we have tried to sell it to them yeah <laughs> so there's something wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> no i mean just it's important to get over it because it's it's important in today's day and age i think that i'll just leave everyone with that because you know it's self care is very very important and of course you know there is there are multiple hurdles financial being one of them but like parad said no, it's so there are so many options yeah yeah today so because please go ahead become okay in your life if just your thinking is okay it's yeah. easy it's because it's everything is perspective driven but i don't want to get into that again uh that is a great episode i feel yeah. again as usual uh yep <laughs> sorry if i said very dark heavy things but uh, deal with it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks shreyatra for listening to me and thanks uh, always thanks thanks yeah. for always i mean i love i love i i always keep telling people this that this is like second therapy for me so yeah. so yeah it is it is that uh um, have a great week guys yeah been- you guys too you too and chin up I think that's all I like. Up, buttercup. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. All right. See care. you next week. Yep. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that show. We'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Paytm Money. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Guys, it's been a really, really cool week. We've had a ton of interesting stuff come out. We had an episode with Kunal Shah on Cyrus Says. We've had really stellar episodes on Pesa Vesa, Advertising is Dead, Filter Coffee Podcast on Empowering Series all over the place. Definitely do check it out. I'm sure you'll enjoy what's been going on this week. And thanks for listening, and we hope to catch you again next week. Hey guys, this is Ayushi and I am Ritasha. And welcome to Agla Station Adulthood. It's a fun podcast we've got going on and we'd love for you to tune in and enjoy with us. Join us as we stop at various stations and discuss different topics that seem to be bothering us and hopefully Dating, you as well. Relationships, beauty, just being an adult, lots of different things. We don't have a great grip on it, but we've done okay so far. Catch Agla Station Adulthood every Thursday on the IBM app, the IBM website, or wherever else you get your podcasts.